Hey, folks, today is October 3rd, 2018. This is Roland Martin Unfiltered. Sorry for our technical delays, but uh, we are here. We are live. We're going to go right to our top story, and that is uh, they are waiting uh, the deliberations to begin in Chicago. In the case of Jason Van Dyke, the Chicago cops who killed Laquan McDonald. Van Dyke testified on yesterday. Uh, the defense and the prosecution, they have rested. The question now is what is going to happen when it comes to this jury? I want to go right now to Chicago with WGN Radio's reporter. Uh, he has been uh, with us on a number of times, uh, of course, uh, talking about this case. Uh, and so I want to go to him, uh, go to pull him up, please. Uh, um, Dumbo T. Piango, first of all, how you doing, Doc? I'm good. How you doing, Rose? Uh, 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 what is the mood there in Chicago? Because obviously uh, the jury, uh, they're going to make their decision. Certainly folks are, are hoping that this jury finds Jason Van Dyke guilty of murdering Laquan McDonald. Yeah, people are on edge. And one thing that we talked about the first time we, we chatted about this case was about how he was charged with first-degree murder and 16 counts of aggravated battery. Uh, a lot of activists were concerned about that charge of first-degree murder by the former state's attorney, Anita Alvarez, because they thought he may be overcharged. The understanding was that by some attorneys was that Jason Van Dyke didn't wake up that morning and decide that he was going to shoot Laquan McDonald so that first-degree murder may be hard to prove. Well, in yesterday's trial, when Jason Van Dyke took the stand, uh, a, a witness for the defense actually said something that didn't play into the defense's favor. It was a psychologist who said that Jason Van Dyke told his partner, Joseph Walsh, when he was on his way uh, to, to attend to that shooting, that he said, um, well, if this guy is stabbing out police car tires, why aren't they shooting him? And he says, or why haven't they done anything? And he says, quote, we may have to shoot this guy. So he was saying this on the way to the shooting, and uh, a lot of attorneys are really looking at that statement, seeing if that can make that first-degree murder charge uh, stick. Another thing that the, the people are worried about as far as the direction that will be given to the jurors is whether or not they'll be able, even though he was charged with first-degree murder and those counts of aggravated battery, will they be able to give him a lesser charge of second-degree murder if they so choose? Uh, and again, of course, we know in the Michael case, Michael Slager, uh, the cop uh, in North Charleston, South Carolina, who shot and killed Walter Scott, uh, he uh, went to prison, but it wasn't because of the murder charge. Uh, of course, there was a hung jury there, and he went to prison. Uh, uh, he pleaded guilty to civil rights violations. And have we heard anything from the Department of Justice uh, that they are going to also put, uh, potentially pursue uh, civil rights violations against Jason Van Dyke? At this point, to my knowledge, we have not. But this is something that activists are really honing in on and, uh, and talking about. They've also been talking about this consent decree, trying to figure out what's going to happen. You know, uh, as you may recall, and you talked about it at length uh, several you know, while ago on multiple platforms, uh, about the consent decree during the Obama administration, the previous attorney general, uh, recommended uh, that some action be taken in the city of Chicago because of the actions of Chicago police officers. And Jason Van Dyke, case, of course, was one of the linchpins of that whole uh, discussion, but they're still hashing out between the city what that consent decree might look like. So from that aspect, those conversations are happening. I haven't heard anything in terms of civil rights charges, though, uh, coming down against Jason Van Dyke. I think everyone is waiting to see how this will play out in the criminal courts. All right, Domate, uh, we certainly appreciate it, man. Thanks a bunch. And we'll be uh, going back to you to see what happens in that case. I'm looking forward to it. All right, folks, I want to now go to Ohio, where a black police officer has been, she was fired two years ago for posting comments on her Facebook page, a Facebook live stream, talking about uh, a police beatings in the aftermath of the Alton Sterling shooting uh, in Louisiana. Uh, Nakia, uh, Nakia Jones, this is what she had to say when her son wanted her to know how does she feel as a cop about these shootings. If you are white and you work I got in the black it, I got it, community I got it. and you are racist, you need to be ashamed of yourself. You stood up there and took an oath. If this is not where you want to work at, then you need to take your behind somewhere else. I decided to work in the African-American community because I'm African-American and I wanted to make a difference. I'm a double minority. They would have got two hits for me because I'm African-American and I'm a female. I'm here because I wanted to make a difference. But how dare you stand next to me in the same uniform and murder somebody? How dare you? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. So why don't we just keep it real? If you're that officer, then no good and well you got a God complex. You're afraid of people that don't look like you. You have no business in that uniform. Take it off. 
If you're afraid to go and talk to an African-American female or a male or a Mexican male or female, then because they're not white like you, take the uniform off. You have no business being a police officer. Because there's many of us that will give our life for anybody. And we took this oath and we meant it. If you are that officer that's prejudiced, take the uniform off and put the KKK hoodie on. Because I will not stand for that. If you're an officer that works with me and you're wrong, I will tell you you're wrong. My heart goes out to that young man's family because if it was my son, I don't know what I would do. I am my brother and my sister's keeper. That's why I'm going to keep this uniform on. Because today I wanted to quit when I saw that video. But I need for y'all to support the ones of us that are right. And I need for you to stand for those of us that are, that are not right. Folks, uh, Nakia Jones worked for the Warrensville Heights Police Department. She was later fired, they say, for violating the sick leave policy. Joining us right now is her attorney, Ben Crump, as well as Nakia Jones. Uh, glad to have both of you here. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Nakia, I want to go to you. It's been two years since you were fired. Uh, your husband is also a police officer. Uh, is the police union, are they standing behind you? Um, our, my union attorney is representing me. Unfortunately, our union guys are, I think, honestly, they're afraid of retaliation. So they're not, to me, they're not doing everything they could do for me. It's almost like I'm out on a limb. And um, just to let you know, uh, Mr. Martin, it'll be a year, October 20th. I got fired last year, October 20th. And, I mean, so they're saying you violated a sick leave policy. What are they talking about? They're saying that I was out. I got into a car accident May 28th. Um, I ended up being diagnosed with a uh, a concussion and, concu and a post-concussion syndrome. Um, the department tried to force me back to work against doctor's orders. Uh, and when I did not return, um, they knew that I was doing, I had been invited to do a church gathering speaking engagement. This was a year prior. They went on my Facebook page, saw the flyer, and decided we're going to order her back to work. I don't care what the doctors say. And when they tried to do that and I didn't, they said I violated sick leave policy, but I was out on workers' comp. I'm still out on workers' comp. I want to go to Ben Crump, your attorney. Ben, um, of course, uh, there's an arbitration uh, that's taking place, uh, but you guys don't want to do that. You want this to go to the court, correct? Absolutely. The arbitration that is uh, precipitated by the police policy with the union is very slanted for the police, Roland. And this ultimately is a First Amendment freedom of speech issue. Nakaya went on her personal Facebook page and she made this to her personal friends, 400 of them. Somehow they shared it with others and it got seen, I think, now by 10 million people because you see her heart in that video, all the passion rolling. And we keep saying, especially in the black community, where are all the good police officers when they see these injustices? Why aren't they saying anything? Well, Nakaya, she spoke up. She's a good police officer. And when her son said, Mama, why are you all killing us? That hit a core with her heart. And she made that passionate plea rolling. And for that, they terminated her. And we have evidence that they conspired to terminate her. This uh, sick leave uh, dismissal is just a pretextual reason to try to say, we're going to shut you up. I dare you speak against the uh, blue line. And that's what this is. And it's so interesting. You were talking about Laquan McDonald in the earlier piece because those 13 officers, they lied, Roland, and we see that based on the video. And now when Nakaya tells the truth, she is fired immediately. Anita Alvarez, you know, it was over a year before they even released the video of Laquan McDonald saying they're still investigating. So what this ultimately comes down to, Roland, is we have to support good police officers, good brothers and sisters who are in uniform, who take a stand against the obvious injustice. And if you the video for Alton Sterling and the police officer says, I'm going to kill you, you black, uh-huh, and then a minute later he kills him, Nakai is absolutely right. That is murder. And our silence is betrayal, no matter if you're a police officer or you're anybody in the community. And that's what this is about, trying to silence us. Nakai, do you regret making that video? 
No, not at all. And I still, I actually talked to Cameron, Austin Sterling's son. I reached out, found out where he was, a friend of mine. So me and Cameron talk all the time. And every time he talks to me, he keeps saying, Auntie, thank you for not letting them forget about my father. Ben Crump, do you believe that, uh, obviously, this is retaliation on the part of the police department? Uh, you, you alluded to that earlier. Uh, and then you talked about uh, the making of uh, this video. Uh, do you believe that this sends a chilling effect, uh, creates a chilling effect for other officers out there who might want to say something? Pretty much what's happening here is saying, no, beware, we will come after you. Absolutely, Roland. And for everybody who's listening to Unfiltered today, we have to stand behind Nakaya, but also we have to stand behind the Constitution. She has a First Amendment freedom of speech. They had no social media policy. This is a direct uh, violation of her constitutional rights, saying that you black police woman cannot express yourself. And if you do, this is what's going to happen to you. And this is more of a message for others, I believe, Roland. And that's why we have to be ready to take this matter to the Ohio Supreme Court if they uh, refuse to let us not have uh, any recourse other than this arbitration. And we have to be willing to go all the way to the United States Supreme Court because never has there been a more critical time in America for women to have their right to be heard. And thank you so much, Roland, for getting this out, because mainstream media don't want to talk about Nakaya having her First Amendment rights to free speech. We are talking about all the Me Too stuff, but Nakaya is part of the Me Too as well. She has a right to express herself as a woman, as a mother, as a person who cares about her community. And that's why we have to take this all the way up. Nakaya, you also were invited to the White House to meet with President Barack Obama. Uh, do you believe that that also is a factor uh, in, to, in terms of your firing? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that a lot of the men felt a certain way. They already felt like she got all this attention. Who does she think she is? And then when I got the invite to the, the, the uh, White House, especially after the arbitration here and everything, they didn't even want me to go to arbitration. And the sad thing is, in my honest opinion, my chief or my mayor didn't want me to go. And they, and, and, and they hold one second, Ben, and they told you not to go? They actually, when I called and asked to go, my chief gave me the runaround. He said, I need everybody's information so I can check it out. I gave it to him. I didn't get a call back. My cousin knows the mayor personally. He called the mayor about 8 o'clock at night, and the mayor was like, oh, yeah, she can go. But I believe in the beginning, like they said, they both said thumbs down because they could not prove that I got the invite, which is not true. Ben, go ahead. Yeah, Roland, I was going to say, also, she got threatened. Uh, her fellow officers said that she deserves a bullet to the back of her head for making that video. We, we, they uh, and, and ben, ben, say one second, that. Ben. One second, Ben. When you say that, was that verbal? Was that written? Uh, was that on a voicemail? Uh, was it an email? Was it a social media? Uh, where, where was that comment made? It was Nikai. made throughout our police department, and actually it got so bad where some of the community heard about it, but it was on a little piece of paper in my mailbox that said... B-I-T-C-H, you need a bullet to the back of your head. When I saw it, I just looked at it and was like, I can't believe this. In our roll call room, the only people that have access to our roll call room is police officers or the chief or something like that. You Regular people can't go back. Then I got a letter that told me I was responsible for the 11 officers' death in Dallas and I need to go get my Black Panther Party card. Then I got a real derogatory letter that they claimed kept, they kept saying this from a black officer telling me to go get back on welfare, go back to East Cleveland, dance in the street with the cooties, told me I was disgraced. It just was really ugly. Ben, go ahead. And Roland, when they made those threats to her, what was really outrageous is her police department did not even investigate those threats. Wait, wait, now, wait, 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 one second. Wait, wait. One second, Ben. Are you saying that with all the things that she just said, the police department, those threats made against a police officer, there was no investigation whatsoever? None whatsoever. In fact, the chief as response has been to tell her and her uh, supporters that they should have been more responsible. So why should Nakaya 
have been more responsible in making a video that was private and answering the question for her children. That's the only response she has gotten. And Roland, that goes against all their policy when there is a threat made to a police officer as many times as you and I, Roland, have been all across America when they kill black and brown boys. They say it's because officers' safety and they felt threatened. Now, what's more threatening than getting a note in your locker saying that word, you deserve a bullet to the back of your head? Certainly uh, tragic there. Nakia Jones, Ben Crump, we certainly appreciate it. Uh, ben, uh, when is the hearing this week? The hearing is actually on the 22nd, and then we're trying to go to court. And we don't want a final decision on the arbitration because we kind of know what they're going to do. They always do that, Roland. And before we leave, Roland Martin, I want to thank you so very much, brother, for bringing Unfiltered to Dallas, Texas, uh, in the matter of Botham Jones. I mean, you really help that community uh, have a sense of empowerment. And you're an institution I've told you before, Roland, but you just being there in person with Unfiltered meant so much for getting justice for both them, John. Well, I certainly appreciate it. Thank you very much. And to the folks out there, uh, we did live stream that community forum uh, that took place on Saturday in Dallas. You can actually go to our YouTube channel. You can actually watch the entire forum, the whole two-hour forum. Uh, it's available on, on all of our channels, YouTube, Facebook, and Periscope. And Nakia Jones, thank you so very much. Ben Crump, thanks a bunch. Thank, Thank you, you sir, for having us. All right, let's go right to our panel. We got Kim Claychick, executive director of Potential Me, Joe Madison, host of the Joe Madison Show on Sirius XM Radio, also known as the Black Eagle, and Lauren Victoria Burke, writer for the National Newspaper Publishers Association. Glad to have all of you here. Let's first talk about Nakia Jones' case. Uh, again, uh, Lauren, I want to start with you, uh, your family, law enforcement, uh, uh, folks in your family as well, and you trying to convince me that she gets fired because of a sick leave policy. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's unbelievable to think about all the police cases and the shootings that we've seen. Obviously, so many of them on video. And then this woman for, I think, actually, for what she verbally said on Facebook. I don't think it has anything to do with sick, sick leave policy. All of my relatives who've been in law enforcement, it's very difficult, obviously, given the union, particularly in New York, to get any of them off the job. Uh, if you, you know, you see the case of uh, Dan Pantaleo, who uh, choked Eric Garner to yeah, death. Do kill Eric Garner. All right. It's been four on years. Video, on video. He is still And he has got working. a desk job with making more money, actually. So, and actually, he has actually been protesting to get his job back. And so, someone is dead. Someone is dead, and that's a police officer who is still on the job. So it's a pretty amazing thing to see somebody lose their job over really nothing, an administrative situation. And, Joe, they're going after her pension. Right. Um, <laughs> and, and they're going after her entire career. And what you should also add to mm -hmm. this discussion is that what tends to happen is that officers will uh, go from a, a situation like you just described and what Crump just uh, described, and they'll go down the road and get another job. Right. Um, especially in a, you know, in a little town like Ohio. I sat there just amazed, and when I read in prepping for this segment, I mean, all you have to do is go to the first two paragraphs, and you know this is a First Amendment uh, case. The cop who killed T Tamir Rice got it, fired from, from another from police from down department the road and, and got then hired in Cleveland. Got hired in Cleveland. That's right, exactly. Where she works is in Cuyahoga County. Yeah, right. She, no, no neighboring police department will hire her. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. And if you and we know that uh, that these officers, if they shoot a young black man, the reality is, I don't care anywhere in the United States, their names don't get into a, a file. Right. Um, you know, right. and they end up going and working somewhere somewhere else. This is just absolutely outrageous because you have done this, I have done this. We have always asked black officers to stand up and speak out. Right. And she did just that. What they didn't like was the, the Maxine approach, and I mean Maxine Waters. Yeah, but also, she, also she they didn't, didn't take any. She just didn't take any prisoners. They also didn't like the fact, Kimberly, that this thing blew up. That it went viral all across the country. Yes. It captured the imagination. It was shown on cable news networks, on local stations. It was shared all over the place. And to get an in invite from the president of the United States, right. all of that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I think, clearly played a role in them saying, uh, no, 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 sister, we're gonna put you in your place. That's exactly what happened. And I wondered, and that was my question, uh, were they 
taking her out because of the sick leave policy. Mm -hmm. I doubt they have any policy that says because you post on social media, we could take your job from you. Well, well, well they, don't. they, they uh, did try to argue okay. with social media, but as, as Crumb said, they said, but y'all don't have a social media policy. They didn't have right. one. They didn't, no have one. They they didn't have one. Didn't have one. There's no way that they do. And so it's really sad, too. I learned a lot just listening to her today. I didn't realize that the notes were actually coming from someone in the police department, and then they decided not even to investigate it. That's huge. And I have to also point out, I don't believe uh, Attorney Crump is actually on this case officially. He is reaching out and doing this, like, pro bono. Because no, no, no. He's on, he's on it. So he's going to actually be, uh, he's actually presenting the arguments. Uh, he's involved in the, in the actual arbitration hearing. But they want it to actually go to the court system. They don't okay, want to, they don't want to be, in the, yeah, so he's, in, okay. he's involved with it. They, they don't want to involve, they, they don't want to be just in, in the arbitration. They <laughs> right. want this to be right. in the court right. system where you have discovery, where right. it's public. Right. And can we bring up something else, too? Uh, and don't let this go by. The union is not helping her. Any other time, the now union... Now, she's a union lawyer, the, the, but well, in terms of the, no, but a I, union I, apparatus. I, oh, uh, look, the apparatus, as you say, you're absolutely right. They gather around, they meet in someone's lower level in a house, and they start, you know, here's what you need to say, here's how you say. That union is not helping her, and I bet you she's paying union dues. But here's the deal. Where are the Blue Lives Matter people? <laughs> Where are the folks who love touting cops? You would think there were people. I, 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 I really want to see, especially where, where the conservatives in this area, because, again, this was a woman who was talking about the importance of the uniform, the importance of cops in communities. Where are they? It's amazing how, how they'll rally around the cops when, when in Cleveland they say we're going to pull the cops off the field because the players uh, were kneeling or, or demonstrating uh, the issue, issue of police brutality. But I don't see them rallying around her. It's amazing how they're very quiet. They're not going to do it. It's always different. Yeah. It's like with uh, the NRA when yeah. uh, someone black, you yeah. know, uh, uses a gun lawfully, registered, etc. And the NRA doesn't say anything. Uh, the calculus is always different, as and, you can and, see. And so the challenge, you know, <laughs> re reality is they're not going to do it. It's a great rhetorical question. We know they're not going to do it. So, so the real challenge should be, you know, our organization our apparatus, our sororities, mm -hmm. our fraternities, right. the, the African-American uh, police uh, organizations, right. and there's several of them out there, they all, they need to do what we're challenging other people to do. And it was very surprising, I don't know if anyone's watched the video in its entirety, but her message was about unity. It wasn't even really about, yes, she talked about those cops that could be racist that are putting the uniform on, but if you watch the whole thing, she's talking about unity. Yeah. And having mentors come in for juveniles that are maybe going down the wrong path. That's what the message was really about. But yeah. the problem well, though weird. is they don't like the fact that she dared to tell them, get the hell out off of the forces and, and take the uniform off. And that's the fundamental problem here. The problem here, again, with people who are the likes of Sean Hannity and Fox News and these radio talk show hosts who are conservative is they don't want to call out these uh, thug cops. Mm -hmm. They don't want to say jack about the cops in Chicago with Kwame McDonald, who erased that video at Burger King. They don't want to say anything about how he lied by saying Laquan McDonald was charging him when in fact he was actually running away from him. See, they don't want to call him out. See, they want to rise to their defense. You know, when you heard Megyn Kelly say, oh, hands up, don't shoot, that was all a lie. Okay, but you don't hear Jack about Terrence Crutcher, who had his hands up, who was walking slowly, yet he's still in up dead. And that, to me, shows the hypocrisy because what it speaks to is they want to say, we're going to protect you at all costs. We're going to say, oh, a few bad apples, but they don't want to own up to be, be, the racists and the yeah. bigots who are there and to call them out as well. well. Fox Joe. News is always trying to right. racialize everything and make everything black against white mm. and make you it a right Jesse against Fox? wrong argument. Oh, hell yes. And they, they oh. do it with policing CNN and all Justin the all the time. No, 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 no. I don't so, think you can even remotely compare the two yeah. because, again, when you have Tucker Carlson going on every night basically caping every for white night. nationalists every and also, night. <laughs> all of a sudden you grieve white men as if, oh my God, they've been so hurt by what's happening in America. No, that's the game oh, here. Yeah. And all of a sudden you finally are having these white columnists who are finally waking the hell up about this white male privilege, uh, which we've been saying for, uh, for, but, for so but long. Let's not, let's not forget, I'm sorry to interrupt, let's not forget what you really said. They ignore it. And there's an old adage, that which you ignore, you empower. 
And that's exactly what they're, why they're ignoring it, because it really empowers these Absolutely. racist pe uh, Please, officers show to me, do it. Show me they, how much coverage right. Fox News is doing on the Jason Van Dyke trial. No. None. <laughs> show me. Show, show, I mean, no, really, no, but, the breaking no, point and, and for them really was, is, Eric, was Walter Scott, because the Walter Scott shooting was an absolutely in cold blood, in the back shooting. And even like Lindsey Graham and Tim Scott had to come out and admit that this was a shocking event. And even Fox News went stone silent on that. And that was a, that was a one of the most sort of obvious examples yeah. of a uh, of just mm -hmm. an unjust police Fox shooting News, on tape. You know, I mean, we can analyze Fox News all day long and all night long. <laughs> mm -hmm. they, you know, they should just take away the word news. Right. But Fox News has and always has has been propaganda. <laughs> they were created for the purpose of propaganda. Excuse me, I knew Roger Ailes. Mm -hmm. You know, I know what they attempted to do when they put it together. Now we're how many years, a couple of decades ahead. Right. But their whole job was to, was to have a network that went to the other side of the political mm -hmm. policy debate. And that's what they designed themselves. And let me to show do. you. So I Period. just went to foxnews.com and I typed <laughs> in the Kwame. No, no, no. I want you to. No, I want you to. Well, facts are facts. I'm going to read you. Matter of fact, do me a favor. Bring me the. Uh, I need the HDMI connection here. Because I need, I need you to see this because I'm, I'm, I'm proving with. Receipts. Okay, and then we How, can go to CNN. No, 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 no. Hold up, that. hold up. Now you, you yeah. want to go there? I, I, you don't want to go there. You, <laughs> you don't want to go there. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. You don't want to compare. Hold up, Kim. You don't want to compare. Okay, Kim. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, Kim. Hold on, Kim. Hold on. Just go there. Henry, just go there. Go to my. Just go there. No, I had to go to CNN. Go right to CNN. I went. I went to Fox. I went to FoxNews.com. Typed in Laquan McDonald. The latest expert explains, no, Chicago officer testifies in Laquan McDonald murder trial. The latest expert, expert explains PCP effect on Laquan McDonald. <laughs> Judge denies change of venue bid in Laquan McDonald trial. Cop accused of killing Laquan McDonald, I'm not racist. Trial of Jason Van Dyke, Chicago officer accused of murdering Laquan McDonald, begins with jury selection. Chicago police officer believes Laquan McDonald murder charge is political. I'm not a racist. Chicago judge slaps white cop on trial for Laquan McDonald murder with 2G5 for violating gag order. Prosecutor, uh, November 14, 2017, no more indictments in Laquan McDonald shooting. I don't see any stories on FoxNews.com when the prosecution put on their case. Oops. Not one. What I see. Like hold on. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, Kim. Kim, wait a second. Kim, no, no, Kim, wait a second. See, first of all, Kim, this is why you should be defending nonsense. Here's the piece, okay? We I'm went, not defending nonsense. No, Kim, nonsense. Listen, no, Kim, Kim, I'm You're proving something. You're putting words in my no, mouth. No, 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 I'm showing you. Go ahead. No, because you start caping for Fox News. I'm all showing right, you go something. Ahead. You go from the cop accused of killing Laquan McDonald, I'm not racist, to judge denying a change of venue, September 17th. Ten days go by. The latest expert explains PCP effect on Laquan McDonald. They completely skipped over the prosecution putting the case on. Completely skipped over the inconsistencies in Jason Van Dyke's testimony. Completely skipped over it. Now, you said, let's go to CNN. We're going to do that. So I'm going to go to CNN.com. And let's look at all Let the me, stories. No, 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 no. Let's look at the no, stories Kim. where they're no, Kim. purposely I'm going, pitting no, Kim. black and white I'm people against each other. I'm going to type in. Other. No, Kim, that's, that's, that's cute. Okay. But I'm going to so type in. So we're just going to type in one, type in one case. No, no, no. I'm doing okay. an apples to apples comparison. And what I'm trying to get you to understand is that, to Joe's point, this is all by design. What this is all about is okay, how do we... Okay, and when we go to another, about, a couple other about, stories, about, it is about design on every network. No, 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 network. again, but see, you're caping again. That's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to Every to network you. has an agenda. They I'm all oh, have... No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So let's talk about this agenda right here, right now. No, no, wait a minute. No, let's talk about wait this agenda. Wait a minute, here we go. Okay, then we'll Chicago talk about another agenda. Chicago police officer facing murder charges. Laquan McDonald's family wants peace, no matter the outcome of trial for officer who killed him. Attorneys give opening statements in trial of Chicago officer charged with killing black man. <laughs> Partner of Chicago police officer on trial for murder said victim was a threat. Chicago police officer testifies about fatal shooting of Laquan McDonald and says team kept advancing toward him with a knife. What we learned from Chicago police officer Jason Van Dyke's testimony. Defense rests in Chicago officer's trial in Laquan McDonald killing. I you have that. far more perspective 
on showing, the Ronald McDonald. Showing both sides of this trial. The point I'm making is a Fox News argument is, oh, we're going to know all the bad stuff with the cop. Right. But when he testifies, we're going to talk about him testifying. CNN means, does the same thing with I other just, stories. I just no, they they do the same thing no, with other don't. stories. No, I they just read Oh, my God. No, they don't. Okay. Exactly what is on their website. Well, Juan McDonald, perhaps that is that case. But on other yeah, stories, the one that you said CNN didn't happen. CNN does avoid <laughs> things. Okay, let's look at Kavanaugh and Dr. Ford on CNN. No, no, let's no, 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 no. Let's this look at that. that let's, do that. let's look at that. We are discussing, <laughs> let's we are discussing let's that. what happens right here with cop cases because okay. one audience, a white conservative audience, loves to go, Blue Lives Matter, support the men and women in blue. But then when you have a black cop who is saying, get rid of those folks who are beating people, then where are they? Can I throw, in, we look at can I throw in what just one observation? Fox News has not done what Roland Martin's show did, or Joe Madison's show did, or what Crump just said. They haven't even interviewed this woman. And they're not going to. They didn't. <laughs> and if Fox News is very honest, and, and they are news, quote on, then they should have that police officer on the show. They have not had it. And what we're trying to say to you, that's a conscious decision not to have her on. I understand and that. And why defend that? What I'm trying that? to say to why you is... Why defend that? CNN <laughs> hold on. Other One stories. second. That One, is what no, News Network No, hold on. No, do. wait a minute. Since you bring up Nakia Jones, Henry, go to my iPad. Mm -hmm. I'm looking right now on CNN.com. They have a video of her, black cop, okay. at the Dallas shooting out wearing blue. Then they had an interview, Black and Blue, Double Despair for African American Police. Okay? Now, they have not done a story tied to Nakia Jones since July of 2016. And got that? Oh, wait, 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 wait. not going Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Henry, come back to me. And this is CNN. No, 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 stop. I'm now about to go to Fox News where I typed in Nakia Jones. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> now, hold up, Kim. I'm sorry. Let me click advanced search. <laughs> Um, get advanced nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing here. Yes. What and else you got is, to say? That is sad because Nakia Jones obviously aren't, um, she should have support. So why do you think, why, why do you think, and CNN can, uh, should Kim, actually do Kim, more, Kim, and they should also Wait interview her CNN should do more, Fox has more. No, Fox, <laughs> I just said Fox should do more. I just said Fox should do more. I just said that. You I just said that. Yeah, well, then, so you guys then, have then, it's your, that. then it's your response. Everybody Wait a minute. Do more. Then it's your. No, no, look. There's a difference between doing more and doing nothing. And, and so the point is, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm a little concerned about you being beaten up the way you are, but you deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> the reality is, you need, you need to go to Fox News and whatever contacts you have and say, you know, they're whipping my butt over here at I don't uh, feel like you guys are whipping my butt, because you know what? Well, there's no man, you don't, many networks look, where hmm? they pit black people look, and white people no, against no, each no, other no, all listen, the time. Don't change. Like you go to Twitter don't feed die, for both CNN, MSNBC. Excuse that's me. How they excuse leave me. It. That's what I think networks I, do, and you young know lady, Wait, wait, don't tell me what I know. You know hey, this, excuse me. right? No, we hey, don't. Hey, excuse me. No, we don't, don't tell know. me what I know. No, we Remember don't know. when we walked in the green room? You didn't even know who I was. <laughs> I looked you up and I knew that. Yeah, that yeah, you didn't know who I was. You asked me, oh, you live around here? <laughs> now, so I don't did. tell me. I, yeah, well, I don't I'll, know everybody. Yeah, th that's my point. So don't <laughs> tell me what I know. So now, having said that, what I'm saying to you <laughs> is, all you have to do is say, you know what? Next time on that set at, at Fox, and next time I have an audience with the producers or the news director, I'm going to bring this up. I sat on a show, and you need to get this police woman on. That's so all you have to do. You're telling me I go on Fox? I don't know where you go. You don't know. Kim, me. you go on Fox all the damn time. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You don't know me either. Wait a minute. Does, didn't she just say she goes on Fox yes. all the time? I didn't say that. When? You just said so it. You don't go you on, on Fox all the time. Kim, it's a yes or no. Kim, it's a yes or no. I go on Fox, but not okay. all the time. All right. I didn't oh. say that. Kim. I didn't say that. Kim. But he did not Kim. know that. Never but he did not know that. You want me to pull some receipts on your ass? <laughs> he did not know that. Do you want me to go to your so Instagram don't like page? You know me Kim? when you don't. Kim, Never mind. This you is want me to go to your Twitter page? This is ridiculous. I will pull out a nut receipt with like a damn CBS receipt you get. Where is this long ass sheet of paper?
<laughs> you don't go there. Okay, y'all. Look, all, I, all I'm asking <laughs> is, is just, you know what, just like that black woman stood up and she said what she said to the officers that she has to work with, you as, a, as, as an individual who also agrees with her and agrees with us on what has happened to her, Correct. do me a favor, speak up. Okay. Speak up. That's but, all I'm asking also, you to do. Don't defend nonsense. Bottom line is, we're making a broader point, is that, and that is this here. <laughs> and that is what you have is you have individuals who, who are in conservative media who, who basically protect and serve cops except when they don't like what they have to say. Just like Republican Party hates unions except police unions. <laughs> I'm not denying that. And, I, and what I'm trying to say is, this is this is this is symptomatic of what you have is black versus white. The fact that this black woman dared to call out these sorry, trifling, thuggish cops, they said, "How dare you?" Who threatened to and kill her? That's why this woman got fired, and yeah. that's why they want to take her pension, and that's why the union is not showing up. And you know what? Those <laughs> cops in Chicago have been showing up every single day, but Jason Van Dyke yeah. leading the way when he's walking in court, providing security, uh, speaking up for him, but you will not have the cops do the same thing for this sister because it's the difference between what she said and her skin color, and that's what it boils down to. And speaking of a difference between skin color and how folks view it. Let's talk about Agent Orange. <laughs> now, yesterday, Donald Trump, he decided to make a comment about these young men who are being wrongfully accused of crimes. Now, all of a sudden, the context of that really was Brett Kavanaugh, okay? A privileged 50-something-year-old white man who was just saying, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. Yet, Donald Trump was the one leading the charge and talking about the Central Park Five. And so today, at the White House, Two black reporters questioned Sarah Huckabee Sanders about this very issue uh, of the Central Park Five and what Donald Trump had to say, and this is how she responded. President Trump talked a lot yesterday about this issue of being concerned about uh, men being guilty before uh, being thought guilty uh, before proven innocent, uh, and this idea of due process, but in the past, uh, with the Central Park Five, mm -hmm. he put out uh, an ad basically calling for the death penalty before they had been found convicted, and even after they were exonerated, he still uh, basically said that they may be guilty. And even as president, he has talked about, uh, presided over rallies where people say, lock her up, talking about Hillary Clinton. So I guess is there a disconnect between when the president is interested in due process for some, but not for others? Not at all. The president actually encouraged uh, the Senate to hear Dr. Ford's testimony in the same way he encouraged them to hear uh, Judge Kavanaugh's. He is simply stating the fact that we are a country of law and order. We are a country that still believes that you're innocent until proven guilty, and we want to see that process uh, go through in its entirety, and it should be on a fair playing field. That's simply the only point he's making. He said the Central Sorry. Park Five was guilty. Yes. And he, it, does he feel that now? I'd have to look back at the specific comments. Yeah. Dave. But that's the real yeah. question in the midst of this. The president has taken this Sorry, moment. Dave, the president has taken this moment to say that he's been affected personally by all of these allegations, and he's picking and choosing, just as this question was. He said that the Central Five, Park Five was guilty, and that he has made Bill Clinton guilty. Has he decided to change his mind on the Central Park Five as, as they have been exonerated? It's interesting that you bring up Bill Clinton. Nobody wants to hear those accusers' voices be heard, but you're certainly happy to hear all the others. Well, Dave, go ahead. The president had them at the I've debate. I've addressed this. I don't have anything else to add. Dave, go ahead. Is he still Thank talking you. to them? Sarah, several times. I'm sorry, did anybody hear an answer to the Central Park Five? Did, 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 you, did you actually hear? She can't answer because it's the, the depths of hypocrisy from this president that he stands up there and wants to talk about, you know, uh, you know what's so sad about it is that his underlying, uh, underlying point is actually accurate. He is just, of course, the entirely wrong message for it. Uh, but this president, when it comes to Yousef Salam and Antron McRae and Raymond, Santana and Kevin Richardson and Corey Wise, he doesn't know anything about what it really means to be falsely accused of something. So the fact that he's brought this up in this context when it comes to Brett Kavanaugh is, of course, the height of irony. He took out a full-page ad in the New York Times 
to uh, declare that these guys should have gotten the death penalty. We had absolutely no idea what he was talking about. But unfortunately, I do have to say I agree with the president in some, ca in some ways because uh, in this moment, men are assumed guilty. Uh, when it comes to a Me Too accusation, it's very difficult to exonerate yourself in this situation. Henry, He's just the wrong person. Henry, to go to my iPad. This story here, folks, this is NBC News website from October 2016. <laughs> Headline, Donald Trump says Central Park Five are guilty despite DNA evidence. And Donald Trump issued a statement to CNN, <laughs> CNN, Kim, <laughs> to CNN, Kim, this is what he said, quote, they admitted they were guilty. The police doing the original investigation say they were guilty. The fact that, that that case was settled with so much evidence against them is outrageous, and the woman so badly injured will never be the same. Now, they were convicted, went to jail. Somebody else admitted to the crime. He was already in jail. They tested his DNA. Right. It matched the DNA that was also on her, a separate settlement. New York taxpayers had to spend $41 million in a right. settlement, and Donald Trump took a full-page ad out at that time and said they should get the death penalty in New York. Now we know they were completely innocent, yet this man sat there and said they admitted they were guilt, and he doubled down and refuses to apologize to him. So why in the hell should anybody listen to him when he dare says that well, it's tough for young men in America <laughs> who have been accused of something they didn't do when he and then his spokeswoman won't even answer the question when it's clear and precise that they owe, he owes them an apology. What say you? <laughs> um, yeah, it contradicts what he was saying today. I mean, obviously he owes him an apology. I think I'll take it a step further. I think he even said that they should suffer. Um, and obviously they are innocent and he should know you know, even just talking about Brett Kavanaugh, I think he should have offered an apology at that point in time, and he failed to do so, and that was a missed opportunity. Joe? Oh, what's your question? I, I mean, Whatever I... Whatever you want to say. I, you know, first of all, <laughs> it, it's not what he said today. It's the how he said it. He... Millions of women, millions of women have bared their souls as it relates to sexual abuse. And he lacked, he lacked the decency that he showed earlier when he suggested that doctor, um, that doctor, that the good doctor was a, a an, an interesting individual with, with a sense of dignity. He stripped that dignity from her. The other thing I, I want to remind people and your audience is this. You do not get answers at White House briefings. Let's just understand that. The, I, um, I, we have an individual who is the president of the White House Correspondents. Mm -hmm, right. And he said on my show, uh, Roland, you don't get answers at the White House briefing. All you get are briefings. And, that's, and, 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 sh and you hit it. She ignored that question. She didn't have an answer. She wasn't going to have an answer. And if she had given the answer that you gave and that I'll give and that you'll give, mm -hmm. she would have probably been fired right. by, uh, by Donald Trump before she could get back to her office. Here we go to my iPad. I want to show people this <laughs> That's was the ad, the yeah. ad that Donald Trump took out. Bring back the death penalty. Bring back no. our police. Yeah. And in this ad, you have all of this, in, all of this here, where he uh, rips them and says, "Yes, uh, this is what he says. Um, yes, Maricot, I want to hate these murderers, yeah. and I always, I always will. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I am not looking to psychoanalyze or understand them. I'm looking to punish them. If the punishment is strong, the attacks on innocent people will stop." I recently watched a newscast trying to explain the anger in these young men. I no longer want to understand their anger. I want them to understand our anger. I want them to be afraid. 
If anybody oh, should be, crazier? if anybody should be uh, psychoanalyzed, <laughs> it should be uh, the president of the United States. And there have been people who have done it from a distance. They've all come up with the same thing. Listen to what he just said. Even before he was president, even thought about being president. He's watching the news. You know, he's wa and, and and we cannot have a president govern by sitting up watching. Uh, the news, unless he's watching this program. But I mean, yeah. the reality is that he hasn't changed. And I think we make one of the mistakes I think we make in this country is you know what? We give this man too much attention, too much credit. I know he's president of the United States, but the reality is I think most people now have seen what New Yorkers have known for decades yeah, well, about this man. That's what I, I was going to say. Well, as, somebody, as somebody who grew up in New York, yeah. you know, that thing that you just read, Roland, he, oh. when I was a kid, I remember him being on TV voicing the exact same words yeah. from the ad. But, you know, we in the press make a huge mistake giving this guy a bullhorn, not realizing yeah. he's going after the First Amendment, right. right? And he has no respect for the First Amendment. He has no respect for our Constitution. And we end up effectively assisting him in his communication strategy mm -hmm. by putting his nonsense out there. And of course, you know, Sarah Huckabee Sanders has no answer because the answer is clear. Yeah. You know, the man is a is yeah. a the answer is is a hypocrite and there's really nothing, you know, there's really nothing to talk about with I, that. I do I do want this final point we'll make before we uh, end today's show. Uh, here we go to my iPad. I want you to see the New York Times uh, <laughs> did an 8,000 word, 8 right. page investigation on the finances, the taxes of Trump and his family. The headline, Trump engaged in suspect tax schemes as he reaped riches from his father. Uh, it details, it details mm -hmm. with not opinion, One but... One million to six, 60 million. Yeah. One million. I only got one million right. dollar. I became a self-made man. And one million is nothing to sneeze at. I wish my parents would give me one million to get Yeah, started. no kidding. But he actually got 60 million. But in, and in real dollars, in essence, 430, yeah. more than 400 million dollars. They showed... But bottom line, I, he lied. Oh, he lied. He, he but, here's, but, but here's a piece that you said earlier. They put in this story, and they actually criticized their own newspaper. One of the earliest stories right, the right. New York Times did on Donald Trump right. where he was riding around in this silver limousine paid for by his daddy. Right. That he had $200 million in the Times printed. Right. And the reason that man is sitting in the White House now is because national media right. sucked up to Donald Trump. Right. <laughs> and they believed the lies. And they let that man go on television presenting himself as this great businessman, which was a lie. That which you ignore you empower. And let me tell you something, Joe. And they've I was, empowered him all the way. And I'm gonna tell you this here. Now, I, I, when I was at CNN, I remember Wolf Blitzer used to always interview uh, Donald Trump, and I went to one of the bookers, Stephanie Katubi, and I said, "Why in the hell do y'all keep putting <laughs> Donald Trump on?" Right. And it's like, oh, every time Donald comes on, we get great ratings. I right. said, "Go talk to real CEOs, people who have real companies." And let me tell you something. We were on. This is when he was coming on Piers Morgan that night, and I was on CNN. And I was on one of the daytime shows, and I think it was, I forgot the, uh, the anchor uh, who was on. And I said this. I said, anytime Donald Trump comes on CNN, we should run a crawl at the bottom that says, for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> I got an email from Ken Jouts, the executive vice president of CNN, telling me, do not criticize Donald Trump when he is coming on CNN. And I said, hell no. Wow. And that, you know, he did. And that night, when Obama was giving some speech, uh, and I think it was to, I think it may have been a, a, a joint session of Congress, it was something dealing with taxes or something along those lines, the economy. Donald Trump was on Piers Morgan's show. And I just said, the hell with what Ken Jouse had to say. So I start tweeting. Right. Like, why in the hell is this dude on? Right. I said, of all CEOs in America, that's the only one we can somehow find because here's why they kept calling him. Because he was extravagant, because he was loud, because he was garish, because he had a bloated attitude, because he talked big. They loved the flash. They loved the gold tower. They loved hanging out with him. They loved going to the parties. And it was national media. It was a New York Post, the Daily News, the New York Times, it was a New York Observer, it was CNN, it was in, it was, it was, I can go down line, all of these networks. But get to what that Les Moonves said. Putting them on. Get to what Les Moonves said. He's making them money. And That's, Donald Trump no, understood no. that.
from the very beginning that he was making the media money. Here's and and in, New, in New York, where we have the two major tabloids, which in their heyday, with 1980s, 1990s, Daily News and the, and the New York Post, he knew that that was a symbiotic relationship. Moonves, he was making money for that. Moonves said it. And, and <laughs> he you did get say this it. quote. I play it almost <laughs> at once a week. Right. Trump, he right. May, Donald Trump <laughs> may be bad for, now this is what he said, yes, he president, did. <laughs> bad for America, but he's good for CBS. Now let me tell you something, any time a CEO mm -hmm. of a major corporation right. says that this man right. that we promote is bad for the country, but he's good for my company, <laughs> that is unpatriotic and un-American. And dangerous. Oh, of course it's <laughs> and dangerous, dangerous. Because uh, I'll say it and I'll end with this. That's what Hitler did. You know what Hitler, you know who Hitler made, the, what was the enemy? You know what Hitler said? He said, we're going to make Germany great again. And his biggest enemy was the media, was the press. He, he declared them the press. The, the, the parallels are frightening. Right. The dictators go after the press And we cannot become a nation of onlookers. And we cannot right. keep making excuses. Kim Trump, tra of course, he trashed this particular story, but he did not counter the details in it. The fact of the matter is it was exhaustive. They actually looked at tax returns, oh. broke this whole thing down. If, at the end of the day, yeah. what they, there, was, there were suspect things that were actually done when it came to taxes and how they were actually yeah. cheating right. when it comes only, to saving money. The only, nice reason, the only reason he's not, gonna, he's not showing his taxes is he's got something to right. hide. He knows exactly. Right. Kim, go ahead. I didn't, it's Joe Dunn. No, 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 Joe Dunn. Oh, I'm never, I'm, no, I'm, I'm never, never done. done. <laughs> also think about that time, the time period. I mean, just that amount of money right now is a lot. Just think about then. Um, but, yeah, so, you know, you can see a lot about President Trump. Um, you know, I know a lot of people do not favor him at all, especially in the GOP. Um, and that's just, that's how it goes. The sad part is he's a master manipulator that, unfortunately, so many in the press have fallen for. That part is the press's fault. The fact that he's able to manipulate to that level and get away with it and not be called on it is the fault of many in the press. But, here's a, but, but speaking of that, so there was a panel the other day, mm -hmm. uh, Ted Koppel, longtime anchor on uh, right. uh, NBC, mm -hmm. uh, ABC uh, Nightline, uh, Brian Stetler, of course, the media reporter from right. CNN was on the panel as well. Uh, and this whole issue of Trump and the media and ratings and all that good stuff came up. Mm -hmm. uh, receipts. Henry, go to my iPad. We've left out a key word. Yeah, everybody here keeps talking about ideology and politics. Money. 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 Donald Trump has been very, very good for baseball. Mm -hmm. He has been wonderful for the industry. Your boss acknowledged as much a number of number of months ago during the campaign. Les Moonves, Donald Trump, was, huh? It was Les Moonves who acknowledged Les Moonves it. Les Moonves also <laughs> acknowledged it, but so did the head of CNN. But that means that, what? That, that if ratings mean, are up, that means what? That Oh, the ratings are up, it means you can't do without Donald Trump. You would be lost without Donald Trump. Well, that is what he says. Ted, you know that's not true. CNN's ratings would be in the toilet without Donald Trump. Trump. You know that's not true. You're, you're, you're playing for laughs. You've lived through enough presidencies to know Hold on a there second, will be more Brian. presidents. What were the ratings before Trump and what are the ratings now? I would say uh, we might be up 20. We might be up 30 percent. We might be up 40 percent. If we go back down 40 percent, that's okay, too. Uh, well, it may not be okay. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> no, but I, I reject the premise that these networks are making so much money off of Trump and thus we, we benefit from oh, it. I, tell me for a moment, if you will, let's get away from CNN then, all right? Sensitive subject. No. Let's go to MSNBC. Is there a moment of the day <laughs> when they are not focusing on Donald Trump or some intimately related subject? It is essentially, oh, I know every once in a while. You know, if the number of people who died in Indonesia gets up to a thousand, they'll give it a mention or two. But by and large, the only news that's covered, program after program after program. Ted, I have to with interrupt. the same guest. Ted, yes, please. But you've got to admit, an awful lot of what Trump does in the course of a day is news. Is news. Yes, of course And so it whether is. you're an MSNBC or CBS or ABC, right. you're going to cover him. Yeah.
receipts? <laughs> Tay it with the receipts? <laughs> Somebody who worked around Ted Koppel ABC News, I've never been prouder of him as <laughs> in that moment. I mean, that was telling the truth. And when you tell the truth like that, you saw how nervous everybody got. It's accurate. Mm -hmm. the, the ratings are off the, the hook. Everybody knows that. Because <laughs> I, mean, I said this, and I said that media executives absolutely wanted Trump to win because they knew it was going to be a crazy, deranged reality show every day. Mm -hmm. They knew he was going to say crazy stuff. That's why when he was running, they would sit there and they would show empty podiums waiting for the circus to begin. That's why every single one of those networks went against their own policy and allowed him to call in. It, we all have done national television. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we right. all have done national call television. It, right. <laughs> if you are a candidate and you want to come on, you got to bring your ass to a TV <laughs> studio or you got to sit in a live truck. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, oh, you can call in. He called in, <laughs> Joe. He called he called in to see it in. He didn't have to come in. Hey, Doc, what? Hillary Clinton could not have called in as much as he did. When, no. That's right. When, that years ago, <clears throat> and here's the term that I, a, a program director came to me and said when I first started in talk radio, we are now doing something called infotainment. Yes. Right. And That's we right. asked, what is infotainment? And infotainment is trying to find information but presenting it in an entertaining way right, and right. that is so when when newsrooms and some people don't remember this they were not profit centers no the right. entertainment channels whether you're right. profit centers newsrooms had to deliver the news and and again Roland and everyone else every morning I'm up at 3:30 and I know what I'm going to do in the morning. You, like you prepare your show. You've got producers. Donald Trump takes the air out of everything. Right. I'm not saying that you don't cover what the president does, but every tweet should not lead a news right. uh, cast. And he gets it. He gets the power of what it is to talk in sound bites, to talk in a sort of market friendly way. Donald Trump totally understands that. And what the media needs to understand is that we're being played. <laughs> the media is being played. Day. You're being played. Every single day. Yeah. Kim, well, go ahead. I also want to say I think President Trump actually made a lot of careers. I think on uh, Twitter all of the time, I'm al always explaining to people the difference between a media personality and a journalist. I agree and with a that. lot of people don't seem to get it and understand it. Mm. So whose career has he made? Um, oh, let's see. There's a lot of people. Who? Cool. Well, there's a lot of books out there that. Um, well, Diamond and what's her name? Diamond and Silk. Uh, definitely. Oh, first of all, the, first of all uh, look, the that, police that, officer. No, polyester, Cuba Zirconia. I mean, I, you know. <laughs> the police officer, Sheriff Clark. Look, you know how long those um, Paris Denard would, uh, would not have existed on CNN without Trump. I said Paris would not have existed on CNN. Okay, first of all, Paris, Paris Denard, the only show Paris Denard could do was News One Now on TV One. Actually, Paris should be sending me a check. <laughs> because people not the CNN job but I mean, these people, me these people who get booked only to defend Trump, their careers were, of course, forwarded yeah. by well, and, 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 not, and not only that, not yeah. only that, and let me go ahead and say this now so we have it on tape. <laughs> uh, the next Democratic president, I don't want to hear a damn thing from nobody at Fox News <laughs> if uh, if somebody who's black in the media is advising uh, a Democratic president. Oh, I know, I know. After Sean when you Hannity. Got, when you got Peter Hanson <laughs> right. and right. Uh, Kimberly Fine. Guilfoyle Sean and Lou Dobbs and Sean Hannity <laughs> and Laura Ingram, literally, right. literally, right. right. y'all, not talking to him through the TV, right. but literally. Thinking about applying for right. jobs. No, 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 no. Weighing in on public policy. <laughs> mm -hmm. When he's in meetings, right. yeah. I don't want to hear a damn thing. Right. If you have somebody else and they decide to call up Joe Madison, Joe's like, hell right. yeah, why don't y'all go ahead and hire so and so and so right. and so? Don't criticize nobody else. Right. Cause, Cause they see, we gonna put They crossed the line with that one, yeah. We're gonna pull out receipts on your ass. <laughs> Just letting you know. Mm -hmm. All right, final comment. Final comment. No, I'm good. I, you know what? I, I just echo what, what Joe said. I mean, he does take the oxygen out of things, and he knows how to take the oxygen out of things, but it, it's a symbiotic relationship. Got it. He can't do it without the press assisting him. All right, folks. We, we <laughs> can't become a nation of onlookers. Right. And, and that, he's going to, he's 70 plus years old. He's not going to change. Right. 
but it's up to us. We, and let me tell you, we flip this Congress come November. We can check him because Got the United States Congress cannot use the tool that the Constitution gave them, then you need to find new Congress people. All right, folks, we got to go. Great show today, Roller Martin Unfiltered. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Y'all have a good one. Holla! Oh, man.